Hello lovely people. Welcome back to another book chat. Okay, so today I'm going to start a little bit differently because I'm going to start by reading uh, one of my favourite books, say favourite parts out of this book. Um, now, you may recognise it if you've been reading it. So, these days the origin of the universe is explained by proposing a Big Bang, a single event that instantly brought into being all the matter from which everything and everyone are made. The ancient Greeks had a different idea. They said that it all started not with a bang, but with chaos. Was chaos a god, a divine being, or simply a state of nothingness? Or was chaos, just as we would use the word today, a kind of terrible mess, like a teenager's bedroom, only worse? Think of chaos, perhaps, as a kind of grand cosmic yawn, as in a yawning chasm or a yawning void. Whether chaos brought life and substance out of nothing, or whether chaos yawned life up or dreamed it up, or conjured it up in some other way, I don't know. I wasn't there. Neither were you. And yet, in a way, we were, because all the bits that make us were there. It is enough to say that the Greeks thought it was chaos who, with a massive heave or a great shrug or hiccup, vomit or cough, began the long chain of creation that has ended with pelicans and penicillin and toadstools and toads, sea lions, seals, lions, human beings and daffodils, and murder and art and love and confusion and death and madness and biscuits. Um, so, if you have read Stephen Fry's Mythos, you may have recognised that. I thought it was an absolutely lovely start to the book, really. Um... And when I was a kid, I used to be very, very into the Greek myths. Um, I'm trying to find the cover so I can show you. Here we go. Stephen Fry's Mythos. So when I was a kid, I was very, very into the Greek myths. We had um, this lovely blue hardback copy of Bullfinch's Mythology, which I seem to think from memory also had the Roman myths. I think it had some sort of Arthurian legend, that sort of thing in it as well. But the ones that really stuck with me, the ones that obviously gripped me as a child, were the Greek myths for whatever reason. Um, so I sort of read those over and over again, then I read various variations of that were sort of the more children friendly ones, I suppose, as well. Um, but I haven't really read much since then in the way of mythology. Uh, obviously, I've got my own little sort of Celtic ones and fairy stories and things going on that I use for my own writing. But the actual more structured mythology it's been a while since i've read any of it and what was really interesting with mythos um and it did take me sort of ages to get around to reading it. it's been sitting on my kindle as they always do for months probably a year or so uh, anyway um uh what was really interesting was it does start from the beginning it starts from chaos from from the universe the very very start of the universe and how the greeks thought it started and it moves on through the, the origin of the gods themselves, which that was all completely new territory to me. So it doesn't have a lot of the familiar myths that um, we probably hear about a lot more often. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a sequel, hopefully there will, because I would definitely buy that one as well. Um, but it was, it's a really great sort of background to a lot of the Greek mythology. And there's a lovely line where he talks about how the Greeks created their gods as well. Um, the arc of the Greek myths follows the rise of mankind, our battle to free ourselves from the interference of the gods, their abuse, their meddling, their tyranny over human life and civilization. Greeks did not grovel before their gods. They were aware of their vain need to be supplicated and venerated, but they believed men were their equal. Their myths understand that whoever created this baffling world with its cruelties, wonders, caprices, beauties, madness and injustice must themselves have been cruel, wonderful, capricious, beautiful, mad and unjust. The Greeks created gods that were in their image, warlike but creative, wise but ferocious, loving but jealous, tender but brutal, compassionate but vengeful. Um, so yeah, it, it's fantastically well written. If you've read any Stephen Fry before, um, you definitely see little snippets of his humour and cleverness coming up all the way through. But it is quite a... It's not an imaginative retelling. It's not a big sort of epic fictionalization of the Greek myths. It does take each myth and it, and it tells it without expound, ex, expanding on it too much or expounding. Um, and so it's quite a nice overview. Uh, I'd have loved to have seen it go a bit more in depth. I'd have loved to have seen a bit more creativity in with it, maybe. Um, because I really enjoyed the Stephen Fry books I have read before. He does have a fantastic style, but that does come through in here. Um, so overall, I really, really enjoyed Mythos. Um, like I say, if, the, if he does come out with another one, I'll definitely be getting my hands on that as well. And someone's probably going to tell me now that there is one and I should probably look online before I say things like this. <laughs> but that is me. I am always behind with any sort of new releases or anything like that. So 
apologies if there already is one out. Um, so, okay, questions for you. Have you read any Stephen Fry before? Do you enjoy his books? Because um, I was actually surprised at some point, quite a lot of people didn't realise that he did write books, um, despite him being quite a, a public figure. And I also think that's quite cool, because that means people aren't buying his books because he's Stephen Fry. Um, and yeah, like I said, I do think he's a very good writer and I've enjoyed what I've read of his. Um, and the other question, do you enjoy mythologies? What have been your favourite mythology retellings? Um, and Percy Jackson does count because I really like them. <laughs> um, and that is all for today. Thanks so much for joining me um, and we'll see you next time.